Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. Uh, if you've been to the channel before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. And on this channel, the premise is simple. It's not should never be everybody's expectation that they retire early, but it should be everybody's expectation that they live their best life. I was fortunate enough and enough things went right for me uh, for me to retire at the age of 51. And with just over a year of being retired, I use this as an opportunity to share my journey with you in hopes to either inspire you or to give you some perspective that'll take you closer to either early retirement or living your best life, whatever that looks like. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. What I want to talk a little bit today about are some of the expectations versus the realities of retiring early. Now, I can't go further without telling you a little story about when I was in kindergarten. When I was in kindergarten, I had a teacher named Mrs. Anderson, and I was a mischievous kid, and I remember in kindergarten, there was a list of 10 rules of the class, and number 10 was the most impactful rule for me, and again, here I am a million years later still remembering this rule, is at the bottom it says, no list covers everything. And so when I did things that I shouldn't have done that weren't on the list, guess what? Number 10 always got me. No list covers everything. Just like if you look at policies at work, they say, or job descriptions, they say other duties as assigned. So I say that to say that I'm going to go through a few expectations today, but I'm by no means going to be able to cover them all. And if there are expectations that I don't, um, I, I don't, I don't discuss then let me know in the comments and perhaps I could revisit those or we could start a conversation in the comments. You know, what I'm starting to find is that there's a lot of discussion in the comments and a, a lot of what people are thinking. And it's really a gateway to me directly where we can have a little bit of discussion or set up follow up discussions about about something. But um, it also helps other people benefit from your perspective, because it's interesting to me how many people actually read the comments and I get comments and emails all the time about different things that people have mentioned in the comments and I read all the comments and I respond to them. So, um, so let's, let's get into some of these expectations. And at the end, I'll tell you what my thought is about early retirement and if my expectations are met or, or whatever the deal was. So I'll, I'll give you my perspective at the end. So hold on until the end so I can give you my synopsis of it all. But uh, the first uh, expectation that I had, and it really was a shock to me, but I thought everybody was going to be happy for me. When I retired, when I announced that I was going to retire, my close friends, they were happy for me. They walked me through some of the range of emotions, and they talked through it. My family, uh, my immediate family was happy for me. My, uh, But when I started to tell my other people, and I started to tell folks at work, and I started to broadly announce that, I was going to leave the workforce. There were a bunch of differing opinions. Uh, a lot of people were really skeptical. Are you sure you want to do that? What are you going to do? How are you going to spend your time? You're too young to retire. You're going to run out of money. And I don't want to say they were haters because I think what was happening was I was getting trapped into their reality. And their reality is such that it's something that they can't do. And so what happens, I think, is people will project their reality onto you um, and, and force you to almost second guess what it is that you're trying to do. So I hear a lot of advice of don't tell people what it is that you're going to do because you're just going to get, people are just going to try to dissuade you. But I don't know. I, I like to tell people, I like to share things. And I think once I got to the point and I realized that everybody wasn't happy for me, I found a lot more peace. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I even have people, you know, friends and family, that every time I talk to them, now all of a sudden, I'm that retired cat. It's not, hey, how's things going? How's life? How are things happening? It's, oh, yeah, the retired guy. Oh, you're the retired guy. And you know that that comes from this deep place of, I don't know, maybe it's jealousy. Maybe it's a lot of these folks are older than me. And a lot of people maybe just feel like I made it look so easy I couldn't have done the work. Uh, and I've, I've told stories in the past about other times in my life. Uh, where people have said that, but I just don't have, I just don't get in the habit of complaining about my struggles. I talk about the progress because my goal is always to inspire others to go after what they need to go after despite the circumstances or the roadblocks because everything has a roadblock to it. So the first one being that I, I expected people to be happy for me and the reality was 
a lot of people weren't. Uh, number two, uh, I, I, my expectation was that all my worries were going to go away, and the only thing I was going to be worried about was money. Well, the reality is I don't think about money because I've always been a person that is – I've always been a planner. And so I put together a plan, and I, I really am meticulous and think through all the contingencies of that plan. And I, get, I know the best laid plans are uh, bound to fail, but we had a financial advisor. We've put an extra – we've padded our emergency fund – We've created a budget that has a little bit of room in it in case things don't go right. So we did all of the steps. And so I had to make a decision that either I allow myself to worry about volatility in the stock market or I had to worry about the increase in my auto insurance or my home insurance or getting a new roof or having something come up. I can either allow myself to worry about that, which really by definition is anxiety because I'm concerned about the future and things that I can't control, or I could just deal with them as they come, understanding that I put some of those contingencies into my budget. And so what I found was after making that decision, I no longer worry about money. Sure, I like to watch the stock market because I've always thought it was cool to watch the stock market because I think it's great how money grows. But I don't do it from a place of, oh, my goodness, I got to go and make all of these changes. And I know that if something big is going to happen, then my financial advisor is going to call me. So I don't worry about that. So of all the things that I worry about, which, folks, isn't much, is the I worry about money the least. And I thought it was going to be the totally opposite when I retired. So now that I'm now that I've retired, I, I know that. If I have enough to cover my expenses and if I don't have enough for any extras, I just don't have any extras. You know, like they tell the the younger generations now, don't go to Starbucks and eat avocado toast, which I don't subscribe to. But theoretically, I just stop eating avocado toast and drinking Starbucks and then I'm usually fine. And the fact is, is that retirement is a marathon, not a sprint. And that brings me to an interesting point, because one of the things that we think about is we think about running out of money. And so I, when I talked to my financial advisor, he laid out what he calls the Monte Carlo scenarios. And so we have our retirement plan set to living to a hundred. And so worst case scenario, super conservative, uh, I'm, fiscally, I am always conservative. Um, and so I, I, I went and I did the Monte Carlo scenarios, and in the Monte Carlo scenarios, Monte Carlo scenarios, there was an 85% chance of meeting our retirement goals. In other words, having enough to last us through market fluctuations and all of that until I'm 100 years old. That so my question was obviously, what about that other 15%? And this is what my financial advisor said. My financial advisor says, look. If you you could work another five years, another ten years now, but you would be sacrificing ten years of your ability to do the things that you want to do for arguably the five years of your life where it would matter the least. And so in those scenarios, and, and the reason he said five years is because in those scenarios it would have me running out of money at ninety five years old. And so as I sat back and I internalized that, I thought to myself, I would rather get out and do the things that I want to do now, enjoy my life now, and then at 95, if I have a little bit of hard time, then I deal with it, but I'll still have pensions and Social Security, and I'm sure my lifestyle won't be as lavish as at 95 as it is now. I'm just kidding. It's not very lavish now, but you get the idea. And so I wasn't going to, as I say, jump over pennies or jump over dollars for pennies in that situation because at the end of it all, that's when at 95, your health isn't the same, your needs are lighter, you're not doing all the things that I would have done, let's say between 51 and 75 or 51 and 80. So so at that point, I realized, you know, I'm just going to live my life, enjoy what I can enjoy because I happen to be in a very, very positive situation right now and not worry about money. And so I don't. And so of all the things that I think about, Money's the least of them. And now I don't want to give you the impression that I have a lot of worries, but there's some things that I, you can't help but think about. You can't help but think about the geopolitical situation, the impact that's going to have. You can't help but think about natural disasters and the impact that's going to have 
or home uh, issues that come up or health issues and things like that. So, I mean, there's some natural things that you're always going to have to think about, but money's not one of them. Or they say, if you're having problems, I feel bad for your son. I got 99 problems, but money's not one. <laughs> Just kidding. So, anyway, the the third one is that I thought I would get bored. I thought that with all of this free time, I'm a person that likes to do a lot of stuff. And I was always under the impression that if I, if I uh, don't have a lot that I have to do, then I'm going to get bored. And it's funny because it becomes almost like a challenge for me. Is Are there times when I have more downtime than I maybe would have wanted or am I that I don't have something planned or I don't something have something happening and I want to do something? Sure, we all have that. Folks, you have that right now and a majority of you are probably watching me from work. So the fact is, even when we have things that we have to do or that we're doing, we still find ourselves in situations where we want to do something different than what we're doing. And so do I get bored? Uh, maybe. But do I get bored to the fact that it becomes a problem for me? No, because what I'll do is then I'll, it'll challenge me to do different things. So there's always there's certain things that are always constant. I can always practice the piano. I can always um, work on YouTube videos, whether it's recording content uh, whether it's editing content, whether it's sending out uh, shorts on TikTok, cutting up videos, there's always something to do around that. In fact, I've been rearranging things so I have the time to do that adequately. Um, or just going for a walk or exercising. So the fact is, is there's always something that needs to be done or something that I can do. And so I don't find myself ruminating about being bored. I don't really find myself bored at all because those are the opportunities that I find to do things that are maybe outside of the box, which I've talked about in the past. This is really my opportunity to get outside of the box and really elevate my uh, my happiness score and move things to the next level. So uh, so the, the I was I was concerned that I was going to get bored. The reality is that I don't find myself in big bouts of boredom. And I just find myself smiling most of the time and just chilling out and checking out the world around me. The The last one that I, I'll talk about is um, I, I had the expectation when I retired, and I think a lot of us have this, is that when you retire, you're going to have this life of just this, this unending vacation, and you're always going to be gone, and you're always going to be... Uh, doing things, you know, we have an RV, so we thought we'd be on RV trips all week and every week, and we thought that we would be in, on trips to Europe and doing a bunch of things, but the reality is, is that just doesn't happen, and even playing golf, I, I, I like to play golf, but I, I, I'm probably only a once or twice a week at the most golfer, because I walk the courses, and it's a lot of walking, um, if I go on vacation every week, that gets expensive, and do I want to be on vacation every week? No, I have a lake behind my house. I have a beautiful garden. I have a nice backyard. I love to cook. I like my cat, like my wife. I like being at home. Home is peaceful for me, so I don't need endless vacations because then I need vacations from the vacations. And so we've gone on a few vacations. I think we've gone on, I think it's six vacations over the last year, uh, most of them together, some of them separate. We have this whole thing of separate togetherness where – you know, we, we have different interests and we do different things. Going fishing is one of mine and she's not a big fisher person. So, you know, we don't do that together. But my, my point is, is that it's, it's not these endless vacations, but they're or endless golf, but they're it's enough golf to be able to feel like I'm getting a little bit better, have some fun, have some camaraderie. And the vacations are enough to feel like I'm decompressing and doing some other things that I enjoy. But I'm not finding myself on vacation for 20, 30 weeks out of the year just going, going, going because, you know, that sounds fun, but it's not as fun as it sounds. Uh, one of the, one, when I was working, uh, I think I mentioned in another video that I had a job where I was on the road 52 weeks a year traveling. And, and a lot of people think that traveling for business is a glamorous uh, lifestyle and that it's great to have all these airline miles. And I had, you know, I'd get, I'd, I was premier executive, or I'm sorry, uh, I can't think of the status now because it's been so long, but I'd go 100,000 miles a year on a plane. 
and people thought it was great. They thought it was prestigious. But the fact is, is when you're traveling like that, it's a lonely life because you're getting going, getting on a plane, talking to some stranger. If you do have a conversation at all, then you get off the plane and you go to the hotel room. Then you're in the hotel, going to work, back to the hotel, to work, back to the hotel. And then you come home and there's all this life that happened in between and things that you miss out on and relationships at home uh, that get impacted. And so then you have to play catch up from that. Plus, you have to do all the stuff that you didn't have a chance to do during the week, like laundry or your dry cleaning or uh, grocery shopping and cleaning and all of the all of the different uh, chores that we have just as human beings that are that are taking care of ourselves. And so it's not as glamorous as you think. And, and traveling the same way because. I have, when I'm at home, I find peace at home. I love being home. My wife loves being home. We have a comfortable existence. And so the whole purpose of retiring was to live a more comfortable existence and uh, enjoying our time. So, uh, so, the, so the expectation was that I was going to have endless vacations and golf and, and doing all that. But the reality is I do have some vacations and I probably have more than I would if I was working. Uh, but they're not endless and I'm not just always going. And then the golf, I usually play once a week. Sometimes I play twice a week because there's other things that I want to do. So it doesn't, it didn't pan out exactly like that, but that's for a good thing. So ultimately I I think the one thing I did say is I want to regroup on the, the entirety of it. So I look at the expectations and the reality. And so I think the overarching question is has retirement met my expectations. And so in order to understand that question, when you look at the expectations of your retirement, my expectations were I was going to have less stress. I was going to have a, I was going to become a better me. I was going to do things that I maybe wouldn't have normally done. And I was going to live the life that I wanted to leave. And so the question is, did retirement meet my expectations? And the answer is 100% unequivocally. Yes my expectations have been exceeded because as much as we talk about how much we love our jobs and how much we want to have impact at work and how much we love the people that we work with, uh, the fact is, is until you have full control of your time, you don't know how much of that is true and how much of that isn't. I've, I think I've mentioned before, I'm probably busier now than I was when I was working or at least as busy, but I'm doing different stuff. But everything that I'm doing, I'm doing because I choose to do it, not because I have to do it. And I do things not because I have to sacrifice and do those things. It's because I like to do them. If I want to wake up at 10 o'clock, I wake up at 10 o'clock. If I want to stay up until 2 o'clock, I stay up until 2 o'clock. If I want to have drinks on a Tuesday, I have drinks on a Tuesday. If I want to have a hangover on a Thursday, I have a hangover on a Thursday. Now, I don't generally do that because I've become a lot more health conscious and what's the use of having a bunch of time when you can't enjoy it because you got a headache or, or you got the bubble guts or whatever the case is, whatever, whatever that looks like for you. But I, I think you get the point. I could do what I want to do when I want to do it or not do anything at all. And that's an amount of control of my life that I couldn't have even imagined how liberating that was. And so when I, when I look at my expectations of my retirement and really having the ability to control my time the way that I want to control it, 100%. Because now I have no excuse. I have no excuse to be frustrated. I have no excuse not to do something that I told myself that I was going to do. All the excuses are gone because I have my own time. And the fact is, is everything around me has gotten exponentially better. My relationships have gotten better. The people I choose to have relationships with and friendships with, that's that's leveled up quite a bit because I'm not just bound to dealing with certain time frames to deal with people. My relationship with my wife continues to uh, stay strong. Um, and so I, I just think that I'm, I'm experiencing things that I maybe wouldn't have experienced. I have more freedom to, to do things. Um, I, I every so often will have like I say the pest control person or the person that comes in and, and services the air conditioning and the heating and the furnace and all that. I don't have to wait until they have a Saturday appointment. I could I can have them come during the week. I can have my dentist appointments during the week, folks. I can go on with this forever, and I don't want to bore you with that. But the answer to the question is: Has 
retirement, early retirement, met my expectations? And the answer is absolutely yes. Is there a chance that I go back to work? Not if I can help it. If if circumstances get really bad and something happens and I have to go back to work, fine. But the way the circumstances set up that if the circumstances got bad enough for me to go back to work, that means that there's probably not going to be any work to be done because everything is going to be suffering. So, uh, so again, think about what your best life looks like. If your if your best life involves having control of your time, continue to work towards that, folks. Don't ever let anything dissuade you. And there's going to be people around you. There's going to be jobs. There's going to be bosses that are going to try to talk you out of it and try to make you feel bad. But I'm here to tell you that with all of that that happens, all of that goes away if you're not there anymore. Um, I always hated losing jo- or leaving. I never lost a job, but I always hated leaving jobs because when I leave a job, then it's all the separation anxiety, but I realized that was all me. So so it, it met my expectations. I'm happy about it. I want you all to do it. If you can't do it, because again, it takes a lot to get there. You still got your um, best life. I, I want you to live your best life. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and, and end it here. But if you find this content helpful or useful in any way, you know, consider subscribing. Uh, I put up videos a couple of times a week. Um, and if you subscribe and you hit the notification button, uh, you'll see, uh, you'll get notified when I, when I put up content. I'm also, and I think um, up in one of these corners is my, uh, my, my YouTube, my Facebook, my TikTok. Uh, all of my social media uh, that I'm on uh, where I put up information there and it's probably an easier way to get connected through messenger and and things like that. So, um, so yeah, if you, if, if you're interested in, in having more connection or seeing more content, um, please subscribe and, and you'll see it. And I'm committed to this. Uh, I'm inspired when I hear about the inspiration that others are getting because, uh, you know, I I, I kind of take the Tupac philosophy. I always say, you know, I'm just another black man caught up in the mix trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents, a dime and a nickel. And um, so when I hear how inspired you are, uh, it really inspires me. So drop me a line. Let me know how you feel about the content or let me know if there's something that you want to talk about, because I do like to make sure that I'm that I'm helpful, that I'm useful and that I'm adding value to you. So on that note, I. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, but have a good rest of your day, and uh, I will talk to you soon.